To demonstrate the power and depth of the protest, organizers led mass rallies at five different locations through the streets of Bangkok. Tens, if not hundreds of thousands of the so-called yellow shirts filled the streets, waving flags and mobilizing in a show of strength. Small groups split, and at the Prime Minister's residence, a dance group was part of a mob that charged the gates. They were repelled by a police presence. We want Yang Luck out. It's better for the country. As demonstrators gathered throughout the city, opposition leader Sudep Tosuban used the city sky train to move between groups, at each stirring the crowds with promises of change and threats of more public protest. We want to kick Yang Luck out because she's the leader of this current government that's under the Taksin regime. The anti-government protests have shown they have stamina and the ability to organize. At each location, they've been able to set up an elaborate stage and bring in tens of thousands of people. But the question remains, is the government listening? The Prime Minister, in an attempt to circumvent charges that her party wasn't able to address the need for democratic reform, announced that she was willing to set up a commission to deal with change. The process of national reform can be achieved in parallel with the election without conflicting with the constitution. But then again, it is necessary that we go ahead with the election. In this conflict, there is no middle ground and no room for compromise. The Democrats have vowed not to run in the next election unless the reforms happen now. The government says that just won't happen. There is only one thing that is clear, and that's that the protesters will stay and this battle is far from over. Jonathan Graver, Al Jazeera, Bangkok.